Lankan engineers have a great duty to perform in regard to the society in which they live. It is important that they remember that it is the public who have uh, paid for the education and probably now provide employment to them. Quite apart from that, it is the duty of every citizen, whether he's an engineer or not, to keep the welfare of the people foremost in their minds. Otherwise, this country is never going to progress. So at all times, you must think first of yourself. No, you must think of the country first. And then you think of yourself, and it's only that way that we can make this country uh, progress in the right direction and join the more successful nations in the world. Quite apart from that, engineers have a special duty by virtue of their training and by virtue of uh, the uh, kind of uh, jobs that they get involved in, for example, irrigation, construction of big buildings, roads and so on, it is their duty to uh, remember how important a part they play in society and to be mindful of their responsibility to be honest, hardworking and to carry out their work intelligently and competently. This is really the, at the heart of what you might call the, uh, the uh, what an engineer should really think about at all times, not merely uh, going to lectures or anything like that, but when he's working every day, he should be mindful, I am serving the people, it is the people who have given me this education and proceed from there. As for the duty to their employers, uh, that comes really second, because when you work for an employer, you must still be mindful that you're working through that employer for the country. And uh, it is uh, important that the most senior engineers should uh, teach their younger engineers the importance of not always thinking about money, promotions, qualifications, and so on, but really to uh, think of what is the contribution they can make to the younger generation of engineers so that they will become better engineers and the country will profit from doing so. More than that, really, there is not a great deal to be said. And the Visqualingham Award, which I'm giving now, is intended to recognize those engineers who go beyond the call of duty to serve the country in some way. They may be an engineer who is doing irrigation works, he can just follow the rules and do only what is required. On the other hand, he can go and get involved with each and every farmer who is irrigated with the channels he's supervising so that the farmers feel that they're part of one whole system which is uh, geared to help the country to go forward. Uh, really, that is the message. There is nothing more. The, so filling a award will find people through whatever means that the institution uh, decides to do, uh, who have contributed in this way uh, to the national conscience uh, to uh, make engineers do a little more than they are merely getting employed in an engineering job. I think that is really my message. My interest in engineering started uh, when I was as young as four years old because my father was involved in construction activities in the estates in and around Hatton. I myself was born in Mayfield Estate, Hatton, and therefore my initial start was to see my father making things for factories and uh, building roads and so on. Later on, in fact, in the year that I was born, my father decided to build a cinema uh, called Princess Theatre, one of the first cinemas, which was not owned by the big companies. And uh, this uh, cinema, ran for about two years after my birth, and then we moved into uh, Hatton and lived in the residential quarters which were available in the cinema. Somehow, from childhood, I was immersed in building activities because my father was involved in these things. And also, my elder brother used to buy magazines like Popular Mechanics, Scientific American, and a whole host of engineering books, uh, which I read from cover to cover, even as a very young boy. 
So I think I was very fortunate to have been born in that environment. And uh, when I came to Kingswood at the age of uh, 11 years, my interest in engineering had already been established. But the more important thing was that uh, there was a little more direction available at Kingswood, which was a far, uh, more advanced college than uh, the school where I studied in Navalapitiya. So um, Kingswood uh, had teachers who uh, loved the country, who always reminded us that we must serve the country first. And uh, it's not like today where the children are taught that they must pass examinations with many distinctions. We were never told ever to try for distinctions. Uh, always be a gentleman. In fact, Kingswood College always said that the most important thing is to be gentlemen. So we were always addressed every morning as gentlemen of Kingswood by the principal in his morning address. So we tried to live up to it. And I think at the time that we were there, certainly uh, Kingswood boys were extremely well behaved and very conscious of their duty to the school and the country. And um, that has been with me throughout my life. So at all times before I do anything, I always think, is this going to benefit my country? And if it doesn't benefit the country, it's no use doing it. So this, uh, I cannot claim credit for this. It is really the schools and my teachers who uh, made me do this. And I hope that somehow the younger teachers today will also be able to infuse some interest in the love of the country into their children so that they're not always thinking of getting a big job, getting a car, getting a big salary and traveling and so on at the expense of their duty to the country. This is absolutely vital. We are a, poor, a relatively poor country and we need the effort of every single citizen to make us go forward. I think that is really my message. But now, this Mr. Lingham Award, uh, I was able to uh, think of giving because in other countries they have awards for people who serve the country. We don't really have a proper award like that from the private sector in Sri Lanka. And the institution was kind enough to sponsor it with my uh, some financial inputs from me. And the important thing is that uh, I believe that this is a good start. It's a very small kind of Nobel Prize. I mean, Nobel Prize is a very rich prize in a rich country, but we in Sri Lanka cannot afford that. But I think it will be a good prize, quite attractive, uh, to make our engineers so on. Keep that in mind whatever they're doing in addition to their duty to the country. The duty to the country comes first. All these prizes and all that comes second. I must thank the Council of the uh, Institution of Engineers in Sri Lanka for giving me the opportunity to make that award and also to give uh, publicity to it in various ways. I hope that uh, the uh, interest taken by the institution, this will continue and they will, the institution will encourage other engineers too to contribute and build up uh, various uh, awards to carry this country forward. When I was about 13 years old uh, at Kingswood College in Kandy, we produced a play uh, about Parakram Bhav the Great. And the main statement he made was that not one drop of water should leave the shores of Sri Lanka without paying its tribute to Sri Lanka. This made a great impression on me and I decided that I must uh, interest myself in engineering and agriculture together because I don't think you can separate one from the other. And uh, we had to build tanks, you have to build canals, you have to build so many three gates and so on. And at the same time, you must learn to level fields and build the nearest and so on and so forth. So that, uh, that whole thing uh, got itself into my mind and I decided to proceed in that direction. Then uh, the Japanese government gave a scholarship, uh, advertised scholarships to go to Japan and study agricultural engineering. I thought that's a very good thing to do and I went, applied and I got the scholarship and I went and studied at the Tokyo University of Foreign Languages first to learn Japanese and then I went to Tokyo University and was studying there. Again, in the Agricultural Engineering Department. When I was there, Mr. the famous Mr. Ray Vijayavadana came on a visit to Japan. This was during my holiday time. Now, although I had been in Japan a fairly short time, 
I was very good at picking up the language and only one in a thousand Japanese spoke English. So Mr. Bijewodhan, who was there on a color plan scholarship, couldn't communicate with any of the people where, who, where he had to go. But as it happened to be a holiday period, I went with him, free of course, not charged of anything, to act as translator. And he was so happy with the work which I did for him that he came back to Sri Lanka, went to see my father in Kandy and told him, Viswalingam must go to Cambridge University in England. That is the only place for him. So anyway, uh, he forced, almost forced my father to cancel my Japanese scholarship and go to Cambridge. And I went to Cambridge, but within a few months, my father died. So anyway, I continued and uh, uh, finished my engineering course in Cambridge University because of the nature of uh, the engineering course I did. I could do structures or agriculture, any of those things, agricultural engineering. I, so the first thing I did was to uh, join a firm where I was uh, specially favored because of my Cambridge education. And within six months of my joining that firm, I was given the task of designing the tallest reinforced concrete building in Britain at the time, the London Hill, Park Lane Hilton Hotel. So this uh, I did and uh, uh, it was very surprising that I gave it to a person with only six months experience. And uh, in fact, the contractor disagreed with my design. And this was referred to the building research station where the director, after studying it, said, no, the designs done by Mr. Lingam are right, carry on. So we carried on. Uh, so uh, uh, right from the beginning, uh, the, I had learned from my teachers that you must study a job thoroughly and then only come to conclusion. That is what I had done at uh, the Hilton Hotel uh, uh, designs. Thereafter, I wanted to get some site experience and I joined an American firm and went to Africa in Ghana. And there I uh, was uh, involved in the construction of two dams, earth dams. One is a Rockville Dam, that is, it's uh, made of clay and rock, clay, sand and rock. And this was a big dam. Um, and the lake that, is, uh, that was built up, uh, that pulled up behind it, was one eighth the size of Sri Lanka. It was a huge lake, 2000, so 250 miles long and about 15 miles wide on the Volta River. So after I gained that experience, I decided uh, that I must go back and do more advanced studies. So I went back to England and uh, uh, did more structural designs for a famous company called Balfour BTN Company, who are the people who built the Victoria Reservoir in Sri Lanka. So I joined that company and I worked in their design office. Then, uh, when I finished that, uh, or nearing finishing there, I got a um, uh, chance to go and do research work at the Imperial College of Science and Technology. Now, when Sri Lankans go to England, they think of Cambridge University or Imperial College of Science and Technology for doing engineering. So, the, I was very fortunate. I got a chance of joining uh, this research institute at Imperial College. Thereafter, I uh, returned to Sri Lanka because I, my whole aim from the beginning, of, from the age of 15, was to come and serve in Sri Lanka. I could have got a very good job overseas, but I said, no, I'll come back. When I came back, for one year, no government department was prepared to give me a job in Sri Lanka. It, I was the most highly qualified engineer in Sri Lanka, but they did not want to have anything to do with me. Because the engineers were scared that with so many qualifications, I will uh, surpass all their senior engineers and become senior above them, which was not in my mind at all. Anyhow, I eventually, I couldn't get a job in the government. They then were looking for a person to go and work in Amelia Now, none of the engineers in the irrigation department uh, were willing to go to work in Ambilbita. No schools, no post office, no nothing, no hospital, uh, no telephone facilities. 
but I was willing to go. So I went and I became Deputy General Manager of the River Valleys Development Board in Wallaby. And uh, of course things were very difficult and uh, then they closed Gallo here and brought 7,000 people without anything for them to do. So we had to find houses for them and we had to find work for them, uh, building roads and villages and hospitals and so on. So it was a very challenging experience. This was all very well and I enjoyed the hard work and I must pay tribute to my boss there, Mr. Ladu Hetti, Senior Engineer Irrigation Department. He's a wonderful, hard-working man, very cheerful. And uh, unfortunately, uh, what happened was that I found that the Deputy Minister at the time was interfering with promotions and various other things, the uh, RVDB. When we selected good drivers to drive the new vehicles, he put all his friends who were drunkards and with accidents to be the drivers of this new truck. So I uh, sent in my resignation because it was worthless sacrificing myself when the Deputy Minister uh, sacrificed the country for his catchers. So this is how it was. Then I left and came to Colombo and became a private engineering consultant. And uh, little by little, I became very well known. And uh, eventually the government asked me to, Mr. Upali Vijayawadhan actually asked me to design the Katrunayaka Investment Promotion Zone, which I did. And uh, I was also appointed to various important committees. I was made a member of the Tourist Board. I was um, a committee of inquiry into the Kandalama da uh, Dam failure, and like that, so many things. I mean, I did a lot of work, and eventually I uh, uh, found that working in government, uh, when there's a bad, when there's a bad or poor minister, deputy minister, then you can't do any work there. So I gave it up and became an engineer outside. I have been asked why I uh, uh, decided to make an award. Uh, uh, to encourage young engineers. The main thing I found at that time was that nobody was uh, in power was rewarding people for the work they were doing on behalf of the country. They were promoting fellows if they did work for the minister or for the party, but not for the country. So I felt that we should have something outside government to encourage people to uh, to get people recognized for their good work, whether they belong to this party or that party, without any. So that was very important uh, to get that uh, thing. And to get the institutions also uh, involved in this uh, exercise uh, without trying to do it all alone. One can't do this alone. The institutions must be seriously engaged, and they are. I'm very happy about that. I'm very grateful to the Council of the Institution uh, for taking this thing on board and uh, uh, I don't want to mention individuals uh, because I don't think that's good. There are several members of the institution who were very helpful to me to get this on board and I am really grateful to them and, um, and want to tell them that I just don't want to mention their names individually. I will do so on some other occasion. It is my earnest wish that just as I was encouraged by my teachers and my elders to uh, give uh, importance to serving the country. That the new generation of teachers and uh, older uh, young employers and older employers will encourage all young people to think of the country first. Because the country goes forward, you also go forward. So, I mean, it's silly to think of only yourself. If you think of the country and the country goes, you're there. So that's what my main message is. Thank you.